Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, I've loaded up Friday's Diabolical Sudoku published by the Daily Telegraph um, on screen now. I'm going to try and solve it live, which might be foolhardy. Um, but uh, I, I do want to try and show on this channel that it is possible to solve these very hard puzzles, um, uh, you know, live, if you like, without sort of spending three hours sweating over every single possibility as to what can go in the grid. Now, of course, this is a bit of a risk <laughs> because some of the puzzles are very, very hard. Um, but anyway, let's see how we go. Uh, so you can see I'm pencil marking in things around around the grid at the moment. What I'm doing, as usual, is if a 3x3 three three block can only contain a number in one of two positions, so the 9 can only go in these two cells in this 3x3 three three block, I make a little pencil mark to remind me of that fact. Um, now on diabolical puzzles, I'm going to deviate from uh, this rule very slightly, and that if I identify cells in the grid, say this cell here, say I found this could only contain the numbers 1 and 3, I will also notate that. Now that can get a bit confusing, but I find it helpful on these, um, you know, these very difficult puzzles um, to, have to record that information. So I'm going to do that too, uh, and we'll see how far we go. Um, okay, so let's have a look here. 1, 3, and 5 missing from row 2, so that's going to be a 1 there, look. That's going to be a 5, that's going to be a 3. Well, this is a 3. Therefore, this is a 3. Um, three. This is a 3. But we've done all the 3s now. We've done all the 3s, I think. And I think we've done all the 6s. Oh, no, we haven't done all the 6s. There's a 6. Now we've done all the 6s. Uh, okay. That's good. You can see now we. We're, we're locked uh, along uh, the middle row of the grid here. We're, we're looking for numbers 1, 7, and 9. So um, we can place 1s here, 7s, 9s can go in all 3. But that means that these two cells here on the outside have to be 4 and 8. Um, so that might be useful. Aha, uh -huh. yes, it's useful. So let's have a look at this 4 and 8 combination here. Now, when I find this sort of thing in a difficult puzzle, it's always worth just spending a bit of extra time. And I've noticed something here about row 7 of the grid. So have a look at row 7 and see if you can spot what I'm thinking might be important. And the key thing I noticed was this 8. Now this 8 means there is no 8 in any of these three cells. And therefore the 8 in row 7 is forced into one of those two positions. And you can immediately see here we've got an exactly matching column 2 and column 8 for the positions of the 8s. And this is what's called an X-wing. We come across it quite a lot. Uh, on the channel. Um, now what does an X-wing mean? Well it means there are two ways that the 8s can be arranged. So for example let's imagine this was the real 8 in the final solution in row 5. What would that mean? Well it would mean this couldn't be an 8 but this would have to be because there are only two positions an 8 can go in row 7. So we'd have an 8 here and an 8 here. Now there's only one other possibility at the outset and that would be that this was the 8. Now, if this was the 8, this would have to be the 8 in row 7. Now, either way round, the critical thing is what this does to the remaining open positions in columns 2 and columns 8. In column 2 and column 8, we cannot have any more 8s at all, because either this will be an 8 or this will. Same thing over here. Either this will be an 8 or this will. So, uh, so let's look at this square in particular. We have to remember over here that we've got a lot of... 4, 5, and 7 have to fit somehow into these three squares, so let's put that in. So we've effectively got six numbers now in row 1. The numbers we're missing being uh, 1, 8, and 9. So this is a 1 or a 9. 
that's a one eight or nine. I might just notate that for the moment. And this is one or eight, except for our x wing. Now our x wing means this cannot be an eight. So this square here has to be a one. And that means this has to be a nine and this has to be an eight. Now that might be very helpful. You can immediately see it's going to help us in the middle cell of the grid. That now can't be a nine, so it's going to have to be a one. Uh, remove that from there like that. Um, two five six along here. Uh, no, not two five six. Uh, one two five. In fact, so that's going to have to be the one here, and we get a two five pair there. And so, what are we left with? Four seven and eight along here somehow. Okay. Obviously, we can eliminate this 8 because of the x wing. So, 4 or 7 there. Um, 2 or 5 here. Oh, there's a 2 5 double there in um, column 4. Look, 2 5 here and 2 5 here. So, the numbers that we're missing are 4, 7, and 9. So, this is a 4 or a 9, and this is a 4 or a 7. So, there's lots of pairs I'm noticing. Um, in this puzzle already. There's so many cells that have been limited to just two positions or just two possibilities in the cell. Um, I can put some ones in there by the old pencil mark method. Nines in there, look. Nines in here. Um, ah, but we have a nine and a nine there, look. So this square has to be a 9. Let's put that in. That gives us a 9 here and gives us a 7 here and gives us a 4 here. So we're left with 2, 5 and 7 to place into these cells. Okay. 7. So this is a 2, 5 pair. So there's lots and lots of 2, 5 pairs all around the grid. Um, just going to take a quick look at row 8 now. Two, four, five, seven to place. No, I can't see anything there. Let's take a look now at row seven of the grid. So two, five, seven, eight missing. No, no, no. Two here and a seven here. So this is a five or an eight, this cell. So, hang on a minute. Is that there... now? I'm just wondering here. There seems to be a chain going through the grid of pairs. Look, look here. That this square here can obviously be one of two values. It can be a four or an eight. Now, if this is a four, this will be an eight. But if this is an eight, we go along a whole chain of stuff. Let's just see what this does. So if this is an 8, this will be a 5, this will be a 2, this will be a 5, this will be a 2, this will be a 5, this will be a 2. Now I'm just wondering now, let's take it, I'm going to take a closer look now at row 4 because it may be we can find another pair. Uh, no, I can't see how to do that. What would be the other possibility then, I suppose? This cell and this cell. So this this cell. Let's take a look at this cell. Two, four, five, seven, eight. Well, two and four are ruled out. So five, seven, or eight here. Ah, but the eight's ruled out by the x wing. So this is a five, seven square. So that might work now. So let's just go back and check. So we've got. If this is an eight, this is a five. This is two. This is a 5, this is a 2, this is a 5, if this is a 5, this is a 7, this is a 4. So either way round, this cannot be a 4, either because this is a 4, or because this is an 8, and that force is a 4 there. So that's this square here, is an 8, and this is a 4. That is lovely. As I, say, I don't know how long that chain of pairs is going through the grid, but it, it felt quite long. Um, but 
you know, again, it's sort of doable. It sort of it, it led us to that answer, to be honest. It led us via the X-wing and by this weird pattern of two fives going through the grid. Um, so that sort of gets the spider sense tingling, and once we've done that, we're we're really starting to make progress. So we've we've found that the eight of the X-wing is here. So we know this must be the other eight over on this side. So let, we can put that in straight away. That's going to give us like an 8-9 pair here, which this 8 helps resolve. So that's a 9 there, and that's an 8. Uh, this 9 might be useful now. Yeah, we can figure that 9 out. Uh, we're looking for 1, 2, and 7 now over this side. 2, 2, this is a 1, 7. This can no longer be a 4. So 1, 5, 7 down the column. So one or a five, and two, four, seven down this side. So ah, in fact, this seven here it forces this to be a seven. It's being slow. That's got to be a seven, five, four like that. This must be one, two. Which is all looking reasonable, isn't it? So this is a five now, which again that looks correct. Five in. Those two positions, five and one of these two positions, two. And move this five here. We're looking for one, two, and four. You can see immediately we can go like that and put the two and the four in. And this two, Two or a seven pair, I think. Two, four, seven to these positions. This is a four or a seven. Uh, one, two, four, five along here. So one, four, five, I think. Ah, uh, oh, hang on. There's um. Okay, so two five seven here and one two five seven here. So you can hopefully um, you're looking at the same thing I am here, which is the classic Y wing comes up all the time in these puzzles. And not too difficult to spot once you get to this point in the solve where you've got so many given numbers. But let's remind ourselves what we're looking for with the Y wing. We're looking for what I call a bent triple. So if we look at the numbers 4, 5, and 7, and let's take a look at column 1 first of all, you can see we've got a 4, 7 here and a 4, 5. Now, this number here, this 5, 7, forms, it forms a triple. If these numbers were all in the same column, we would have a 4, 5, 7 triple on the column, and we would know that the numbers 4, 5, and 7 couldn't be repeated anywhere else in the column. Well, here it's not quite that powerful, because this 5, 7 is, is not in the column, is not in column 1, but it does share a 3 by 3 box with this number here. Now, that allows us to do a little bit of logic, um, and what we need to do is to find the middle of the Y-wing, so that's going to be this cell, this is called the pivot, and ask ourselves the question, okay, well, what, what happens when this takes various values? Now, if this is a 5, you can see this will be a 7, yeah? Now, what happens if this is a 4? If this is a 4, this will be a 7. So we're either going to have a 7 here, or we're going to have a 7 here. That's forced. Now what does that tell us? Well that tells us that any cell in the grid that can see both this cell and this cell cannot contain a 7. And the obvious one here is this cell. Look at this cell. This can't contain a 7. So let's remove the 7 from here. And now look. Now look at row 7. We've got a 2, 5 and a 2, 5. There's a 2, 5, 2, 5 pair. So this cell here has to be the 7, which means we get the 2 here and it all starts to unwind itself as we'd like it to. So that's going to be a 4, that's going to be a 2. Now this is a 7 over here. Uh, we're left with 4, 5 and 
eight along the bottom row. Uh, let's just have a look at that. I don't think we know the positions of the fours yet, do we? It's looking like this. And now we can use this five. Um, oops. Five, two, five, two. So this is one, this is two, this is seven, five. Four, one, four here, eight, five, seven, four, and this must be an eight. And there we go. So, you know, not fantastically difficult to solve actually. Um, we had to spot the, the X wing, which I think was, was doable. Then there was this lovely chain of pairs going around the grid to give us the value of this cell. And then finally a little Y wing near the end, just, to, just for good measure. So I do hope you enjoyed the solve. I did it live today, which is a bit different. Um, sorry if I missed anything very obvious on the way through, therefore it often happens. Um, and if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.